Hello, welcome to RFEFP. I'm your host again, Nibi, and thank you for joining me. Please sit back and relax, kick back, and let's get mooning together. <laughs> Heliocentricity does tell us that the moon goes around the Earth, it orbits in around 28 days, and it's the sun that reflects heat to cold and a magical light onto the grey moon's surface, and this reflective light is somehow responsible for our night time. Now you and I both know, it can and does get below freezing in some of the hottest deserts on the plain during the night hours, so we already know that moonlight is a cold light source instead of a warm one, and this is a concrete proof and one you already know without realising it. They've also indulged in our imagination, to some degree, that the moon is even considered to be a solid, opaque spherical world that some say is holding alien life forms, having mountains, valleys, vast lakes or seas once, volcanic craters, and other conditions analogues to the surface of the Earth. The whole visible disk has been mapped out and special names given to its various peculiarities, as though they have been carefully observed and actually measured by a party of terrestrial surveyors. And you can listen to what people like David Icke or Dr. Stephen Greer believe what they think the moon's for as well. Now all this has been done in direct opposition to the fact that whoever for the first time actually looks at the moon's surface through a powerful telescope is suddenly puzzled and perplexed to say what its composition is really like or how to compare it with anything known to them. The comparison which may be made will always depend upon the state of mind of the observer. But in heliocience, folks, wants you to believe that the moon's rotation is perfectly synchronized with its orbit, and so that's why we only ever see one side of the moon, rather than conclude the flaming obvious that the moon is simply not rotating. She is a cold light, the lesser luminary, to rule the night. Simple. Which actually brings me to part two of the RFEFP series our cold majestic moonlight. Now folks, did you know that some plants, farming and certain fruits are made using only cooling moonlight? Sunlight's effect on growth on vegetation is well known, but moonlight also influences plant growth. It has already been proved that the light intensity as low as 0.1 lux, which is about the equal to the light of a very small candle, can influence photoperiodism in plants, which is the essentially the response of plants through their growth in 24 hours. Now, scientific observations had realized that some plants have adaptive mechanisms built in to their actual DNA structure that prevent the cold moonlight from actually interfering with photoperiodism. Now, many plants on our plain earth, folks, change the position of its leaves from horizontal in daylight to vertical at night time. And why do they do this? Because this reduces the intensity of the cold moonlight rays on the leaf surface. Also, night garden centers have further elaborated the activity of plants on a full moon night. The Al Bizizeria, for example, has leaves that rotate and actually spin, and you can time lapse them. And their paired leaves actually fall together with their upper surfaces shading each other from that cold, penetrating light rays. There are also plants that prefer to grow in less light, and certain farmers can identify these such plants. Now, when seeds are planted on a full moon night, farmers state, with the moon's cooling light, the whole reflected cosmos comes onto the Earth, 
so that the force of growth may be enhanced. These plants planted on a full moon night will receive the cooling moonlight rays compared to the hot sunlight rays during the day. This cold, soft, silvery light, folks, is so unlike sunlight, or let's say gaslight, or any other light on this plain earth for that matter. Now, people gave credence to the old moonlight, folks, as far back as Christ's time, a Roman scholar named Pliny the Elder, who lived at the time, even advised people to harvest fruit or vegetables on a full moon night, because he had observed ants to be busiest in their anthills then, and at new moon, they were observed to be listless. Pliny proved to people that fruit was not vulnerable to damage at new moon, Ants remaining in ant hills will mean they will not come out in the cold and destroy the fruit. If fish were to be hung up to dry in the sunlight, they will be preserved. But if they are exposed to the cold moonlight, they will be rendered putrid in one night. And the same applies to certain fruits as well. Maria Thun, a moon watcher, and a farmer in Germany explains that when the moon reaches her highest point on the plain and then begins to go down as she never sets, remember, plants will focus on their root zone, a wonderful time for transplanting. So they say, the plant at this time forms rootlets giving it anchorage. Subsequently, when the moon is low on the horizon as she circles, it signifies the sun's role in autumn and winter the perfect equilibrium. Some plants during this period focus on their portions which are in the soil, and this is the best time to manure, to compost, and to harvest root crops. Moon farming, folks, really does entail a tremendous dedication with a keen sense of observation. As we know, self-observation is certainly wonky to the flat earth science, to no surprise if you're a subscriber. Now the sugar on top folks, near Philadelphia in the US of A, there is a farm established way back in 1935, and many do not realize that this was the first organic farm in the US. Their studies on cold moonlight that have been compiled in a calendar known as the Kimberton Hills Calendar. The farmers at this farm program work on certain days and nights when the moon has entered her particular zone of the sky. So when leaves or fruit show signs of developing, this is certainly noted by the farmer who will write out the details of the moon's position as she circles, and which plants responded best to when the moon was in which particular zone. Hence, cabbage is apparently planted on a leaf day and tomatoes on a fruit day. There is also a so-called farmer's Bible, so to speak, folks. This amazing tome is called the Old Farmer's Almanac, used by millions of gardeners in print, online, and mobile apps. And in the old days, they made predictions from a secret formula created by the publication's founder, Robert B. Thomas. And that formula was locked away in an old tin box in the company's headquarters in Dublin. And I bet you would love to know what that secret was while well, you're listening to it, folks. This is concrete proof that the moon has her own cooling light, her own path and lunar cycles around the plane, and is a giver of her own magical phenomena. She is certainly not reflective in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. The true science folks of nature and all its magical glory, only a true form of intelligent design could create plants, a type of life form 
that in its actual DNA makeup, able to change its position of leaves during the day and change their position during the night time. They are two very different forms of light and total opposite rays of heat and cold, scientifically proven. The facts of nature are truly fascinating and the total opposite from the so-called facts of heliocentricity. They really are. Hence this, folks, is exactly why moonlight Cold, majestic moonlight is a real flat earth fact on the plane. Thank you for watching. Tap that sub if you want to know more. And of course, I will see you next time in part three. You take care, be well, and I wish you all the luck on the plane.